Hello, Carrie here. Today I'm going to be showing you how I make these Faded Beauties buttons. Following on from my recent, uh, recent uh, video where I uh, gessoed buttons and then stamped on them after applying some watercolour washes, I thought I'd try something else. I've heard people do this on Fimo uh, clay. Uh, this method uses transfers that are normally applied on nails. I'm not a nail technician, do I pretend to be one on the internet? <laughs> so um, I had to do some investigation to find out how this worked and I've been experimenting and these are the results I've got. So I've got myself a simple plain white button which I'm sanding with my nail file. I'm going with the whole nail theme today. <laughs> Uh, actually, I find this a lot more convenient than using uh, sandpaper when I'm doing small items. I don't uh, scratch my nails and it works really well. I can hold it much better. So I'm just sanding all over so that when I apply the gesso, it sticks and remains there. Just going round. It's quite a, quick, uh, quite, quite a quick job. You don't have to sand it too thoroughly. Just enough to give some. I'm just feeling to see if there's any smooth spots. And... Um, I'm going around the edges, but there's no point really because I don't apply the transfer to the edges. Oops, went off screen there. So I'm just going around, just making sure if there's any shiny bits. There we go. And now, oh, sorry about my big arm there. I'm going to apply some gesso, uh, the gesso primer. And I, again, like I did with the watercolour buttons, I apply two thin coats of gesso, which is much better than one very thick one. I'm going to hold the button down with that paper clip. <laughs> I can't see my pokey tool. And I allow the paint to dry thoroughly between each layer. So I'm going to come back in a minute once it's dried and show you the rest of the process. So now the button's nice and dry and this is what I'm going to use to apply the transfers, just some simple um, top coat. And these are the transfers, I got them on Amazon uh, and they're beautiful, look at them, they're just gorgeous. I quite like the floral effect suits the faded beauty theme that I'm going for and there's this one this one I tried to do on a black button because it's got a lot of white in which didn't work out very well this one turns out really well I love the Baisley effect so uh, this one has been the most successful on both of these buttons for some reason so I'm going to do another one of those for this demonstration and what I do is is find some areas I quite like on the transfer Oh no, first of all, <laughs> I need to apply the varnish. Now, timing is key to this, I've discovered. You have to apply the varnish and then you have to let it dry so that it's only just a touch dry. It's not got to be wet at all, but it's not got to be bone dry. It's very difficult getting that right. So um, I've applied that and while that's uh, drying, I'm going to get my transfers and cut out some bits that I would like. I'm sorry, I'm doing that a bit off uh, camera. I've zoomed in as much as I can with this, so I'm not so aware of where I am. You can see the shadow of me cutting out little bits. Sorry about that. There, I've cut out these little bits. I like the green. That's the back side. It's different to the top side. I did one once when I put it on upside down and didn't understand why it didn't work at all. <laughs> And I'm going to have a little bit of the green. I'm going to have a little bit of the um, pink flowers. There, I quite like those. I'm going to actually be more precise with my cutting. You don't have to fussy cut at all, but just cut round roughly round the areas of the transfer. So now I'm just cutting out the areas that I want to use on the button. I don't have to fussy cut it because it's on a clear background, but just roughly cut around the area I want, I would like to keep and use on the button. 
So I've got these pretty little roses, which I think um, are my favourites. It just looks so faded beauty to me. And this little bit of greenery as well. And a pair of tweezers are very useful for this job. I'm just trying to decide. I need to um, do some burnishing and I'm trying to decide which tool would be quite good for that. Just testing them. No, that's too wet. It's stuck to my finger. So these are the Faded Beauty ones. These are lovely. I like that one. That came out quite well. I think um, if I really wanted to do them properly, I would buy the appropriate glue. But at the moment, I just want the vintage look anyway. That's why I call them my faded beauties. This one has got a sheen on it. Um, I'm not sure whether I like it or not. I kind of do. And I use this foil type um, transfer. It doesn't cover perfectly, but again, that suits the faded beauty uh, theme. They're a bit too modern. I think that's what I don't like about them. And there's these again which are lovely but they're solid i'm not sure i want the solid look i quite like the ones that are see-through these holographic ones are quite pretty and that's nice but they're all very modern in my fit in my um yeah for my theme so these are my favorites the one with the flowers on oh that's beginning to feel good now i'm very it's very nearly time to apply the uh, transfer it did stick a little bit. Yep, now they're ready. <laughs> so here we go. Picking up the rose, going to apply that in that area. Press it down. And now the greenery on the other side. That way round. Press that down. And now I need to do the burnishing. This is the important part. If you don't burnish, it doesn't work. So you need to burnish over, and I always go over twice, just to make sure it is thoroughly pressed down. I mean, the idea is to be imperfect, but I want to get as much down as I can. So burnishing all over. Trying to get on the edge as well if I can. And here I am going around the second time. The reveal is the best bit. I'm excited for that. I think you can use these transfers in other things as well. Here's the fun bit. You have to pull it back fast. Woof. Oh dear. There's not a brilliant coverage there, but never fear. Let's try that one. Ah, oh, that's much better. Oh, I like that. But I'm going to put some more of the green on. So if that happens, all you do is um, put some more nail varnish on. And I'm going to put that on there and see if that works the second time. I'm going to varnish all over, actually. That is a way to finish the buttons, is to apply clear varnish. If you want to. So again, I've got to wait for that to dry. I tried um, glue stick that sort of worked. I tried three in one and that didn't work at all. So I've been experimenting and I did try ordinary nail polish, but that didn't work either. The clear polish seems to be the best. I mean, it's not perfect, but that's fine. If I were to be serious about this, I would get the glue, but I'm not sure whether I really am that serious because I do like the uh, faded beauty effect. So we're nearly ready. All oh, that feels, oh no, it's still a bit sticky. <laughs> Oh, the timing, so difficult. And in fact, because 
This is nail varnish on top of a layer of nail varnish. The timing isn't exactly the same as it was on the gesso, because the gesso was slightly absorbed some of the um, lacquer. I like that little blue and the butterfly there. I'm thinking I could put one on my nails. I'm sure it would go horribly wrong if I tried that, so I'm not going to. <laughs> Right, now it's ready, so I'm going to pop the green on there and burnish it again. Burnishing, burnishing. <laughs> holding, holding it down with the paper clip wobbling about and hopefully that will fill up that area I do love that bit when, bit when you tear it off quickly go you go whoosh oop, missed, whoosh <laughs> and that's covered it a lot better again it's not perfect but oh, it's, I love it oops I'm off screen oh, going the wrong way that's it there it is focus oh isn't that good so let me know if you try this i'm going to enjoy using these buttons in the project thank you for watching bye